what I want to do is go over the IK hierarchy that you might need for a character. Um, parenting the IK correctly is going to save you a whole load of problems um, because it'll just automate a lot of things. With this character here, I've, I've basically created it so that the the shoulders of the uh, of the arms and the and the wrists are parented to the torso, and so are the hips. But the controllers for the legs are kept free, so that I can move the torso around, and the legs and stuff will move, and the, the hips will move with it, and the arms will move with it, and I can then key these to move backwards and forwards. The easiest way to do this is simply to take the bones that you've created. So let's just let's just create a new comp actually just to show the principle of this. If I I'm just going to take a torso and just pop it into the comp and I'm going to take an arm. Let's take a leg actually. The leg's a bit more complex so it's worth covering. So if I take the leg and just pop that in as well. I'm going to create my puppet pins on the leg here. I'm just going to pop those in there, the knee, the elbow and the toe. Um, I'm going to create bones. So I'm going to select these puppet pins. Whoopsie. Uh, I've got those selected. I'm just going to click bones. This has been covered in previous tutorials. So if you've missed that particular one then you can go back to the, the DUIK uh, introduction. Just going to rename these. So I'm going to rename this as toe and ankle. Oh, properly, sorry. I tell you what, as best practice, I should really call this right toe, right ankle, etc. Make sure you name it, especially if you've got two of something like two arms and two legs etc so that things are right and left and it's because the expressions will break if you just simply put in an ankle and you if you name two things ankle and then you create an expression that moves the the ankle the expression will try and control both ankles and that will cause, cause some problems so I'm going to put in the right knee and I'm going to put in the right hip um, and then what I'm going to do I've got my bones there I'm just going to use the pick whip and I'm going to parent them so the right toe to the ankle, the right ankle to the knee, and the right knee to the hip. And it's just as we've done in previous tutorials. So now if I move the, the knee bone, whoops, I'm going to just lock that leg so I can just select the bones themselves. doesn't help that I've made the character red and the controllers are red as well. So it's a little tricky to see. But it means that when I move these now, if I move the knee, it moves everything below the knee. If I move the ankle, it moves everything below the ankle. And if I move the hip, it'll move everything. So I've got my hierarchy set up. The hierarchy is required for the inverse kinematics or the IK to work. IK works on hierarchy. It needs to know what the child is and what the parent is. If you don't have that, it doesn't know how to move one or the other because something has to have priority over something else. So I'm going to take the ankle and I'm going to create a controller and I'm going to take the ankle, the knee and the hip and then finally the ankle controller because remember that when you're creating this IK chain you need the lowest part of the IK chain which is the ankle at the moment this is the ankle anyway um, the knee and the hip so it's going up in that order and then finally selecting the controller I'm not selecting the toe because the ankle um, is next to the, to the ankle controller. The toe is already parented to the ankle so when we move that ankle controller it will move the toe anyway. So I'll just go over that again. I'm going to select the ankle control, select the knee, the hip and then back to the ankle controller. Press OK. I'm going to leave the stretch on and I'm going to press OK. And then what that means is hopefully is I've got this controller which when I move it around and when I rotate it, it'll rotate the foot and it'll move the leg around. Now what's so great about this is I can turn on uh, I can turn the, the goal on and off for this controller so when I move it around um, let's just turn that back on again so it means that I can 
rotate this round to a position like that turn goal on and off and what the goal does is, is if it's turned on it means that the foot will always stay in the rotation of the controller if it's turned off it'll simply act in accordance with its parent so you can change things there so if I've got a walk cycle and I need to be able to move the foot left and right there's a couple of things I'll need to adjust in the toe actually um, then I would keep the goal on but if I was doing a kick and I wanted the the foot to swing and kick a ball then I would I could use I could turn the goal off and have the foot swing like that so but for now I'll just turn the turn the goal back on again so it's just a, a recap on the on the goal um, and that what it means is what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to move this torso up and down and I also want to be able to um, have the foot stay where it is and have the knee bend so I'm going to select the ankle and the hip and I'm going to move it over to the torso I'm going to grab the torso itself and just drag it to the top of the queue there so that or the top of the layers so that it's over the top of this and then what I'm going to do is take I'm going to leave the right ankle free but I'm going to take the hip and I'm going to parent it to the torso so drag the pick whip and drag over king torso and then it means when I move the torso up and down the knee bends now there are some issues there with like stiffness and and you can use the starch tool for these parts in here so if I go back to the to the leg itself and just grab that if I use the starch puppet starch tool I can go back to these and just it'll keep the position that it was in when you first put the, the keys in and I'm going to pop in some starch in these areas it's quite a wide extent so I'm going to reduce the extent of these down and same with this one and the same with this one here whoopsie I'm going to drop the extent of that one and probably going to move this one to the end a bit more so I get a stiffer toe uh, maybe that's fine so then it means I get a proper bend in there uh, and the leg doesn't just bend around in a crazy manner so now I've got my torso and I've got the leg moving as I need it to do or behaving as I need it to do so if I go back to comp 1 where I've got the entire thing comped up what I've done is I've I've made sure that the wrists are parented to this torso and the shoulders are parented to the torso as well so when he moves around like this those arms swing with him and I can key those and have them moving around left and right um, and what I've also done is I have left these ankles to be uh, unparented so it means when I move the torso the feet stay where they, were, they are and I can control these ankles as I need to now another thing you can do which is advisable really is to create a null object and parent things to a null object it means that you're not using um, specific image layers for um, for controlling stuff uh, these are kind of null objects they've created here so that's another way of doing it. you could create a null which is layer new and then null object uh, and it's just basically an invisible object that you're able to pair and stuff to and that's another way of doing it. that's probably best practice but this is a fairly simple kind of character rig so I've just painted things to the torso and now when I animate these and move them left and right so if I take this um, this particular arm for instance and I want to key its movement um, I'm going to key the position from there to uh, back here whoops to back here then that will move to there. I'm just going to so basic swing from there to there. And if I want to then move the torso and go back down to the torso, and I can key the position of the torso, and I'll just move the torso there. And then so you can get all of this movement in, um, key everything independently, and because it's working in a hierarchy it means it's much much easier to control and you don't have to animate those hips and the position of those hips because they're just naturally going to follow the torso same with the shoulders same with the hands and the head so that's the
basics of how to create a hierarchy using the DUIK rig and, and create a hierarchy for the purposes of, of a character animation.